Hi, Joe Cerrone. And Al Rosen. Welcome to CAD 107, Introduction to 3D Printing in our weekly Zoom meeting. Midterm practice exam. Midterm exam is available for practice in the quizzes and exams. The midterm will start on April 7th, which is next week. on Wednesday, and it is due April 14th at 1130 p.m. We will use the Honor Lock system, so you will need a subscription to Honor Lock. We recommend that you get the semester pass. I think it's 11 or $12 for that, but we will also be using it for the final exam. The Honor Lock midterm exam covers chapters one, two, and three from our textbook. And so the textbook is Mastering 3D Printing that has the content for this exam. We're using two books. We're using a lab book, which has the projects, and then we're using a theory book, which explains how everything works. The first three chapters, Printing Hardware and Software, Printers and Printable Materials, Printers, Workflow, and Software, you can find that information in the D2L content section and here's our textbook. And then I've already opened up the, the first chapter. Let me just back up to it. And so the first chapter is on 3D printing hardware and software. And it goes through things like why you would use a 3D printer, advantages or additive manufacturing as 3D printing is also known as, some of the history behind it. And then a number of just information about how the projects got started, crowdfunding, um, purchasing kits, when to use a 3D printer. And it also goes and talks about other technologies like laser cutting and CNC programming or CNC cutting, CNC machines, which we do all three of them over at our Skokie campus. So when we're in person, we can explore these technologies as we look at them. But as you go through and you start to prepare yourself for the exam, make sure that you read the first three chapters and then pay close attention to the questions at the end of the chapter or the review questions. Things like this, name one type of part that could be best fabricated with a 3D printer, a laser cutter, or a CNC machine. And then if we look at the second chapter, the second chapter from the textbook is on 3D printers and printable materials. And so we'll go through and talk about things like PLA, polylactic acid, or ABS, acryl butyl sulfate, um, nylon, uh, carbon fiber. There's a number of different materials that can be used on a 3D printer. And so this is very good. And it also explains some of the different types of 3D printers like a Delta printer versus a Cartesian printer. So as we look at the practice test, when we take the practice test, you want to make sure that you go through and you take a look at the first three chapters of the textbook. And so as we look at the second chapter in our 3D printing textbook, just a lot of really good con content as we get more experience with working with 3D printers. Here's a failed print and it does happen quite a bit. Um, when you start to work with additive manufacturing techniques, if the parts don't fuse together, you get this bird's nest type of effect from the material. And then other things like printing with support so that you you don't get something like this because that's what happens when the material is not supported. And so we use this printable support material and then different filaments. It's always a good idea to get a digital micrometer. They sell them on Amazon for about $10. It's an excellent price. And when we work with 3D printers, the measurements are all in millimeters. It's, um, it's, it's not a um, imperial system. And so here's some information about the types of materials 
And here's some examples. And this is kind of neat because this is kind of what we're working on, a vase, and they're using this silk PLA. And the silk is really nice. It's kind of shiny. If I look at our interface, this is our vase project. And we're printing it with a, um, a support. And we're also printing it with build plate adhesion called a brim, which is this part right here. And then we're using spiralized outer contour, which is this special mode. And it's right here, spiralized outer contour, which will print it as hollow. And I just printed this project right here. Here's an example of, of that project. And so with the digital manufacturing the way it is today, we can do everything remotely. And the tools are set up to be able to work that way. And what we're teaching is how to go through and be able to draw the parts on CAD, bring them into the slicing software, and then to print them. And so all of these things start to come together now that we've had some time. And that's what the midterm is about. What we wanna be able to do as we take a look at the midterm is to be able to, to um, understand the process more and understand more about the materials. And so take a look at the first three chapters, go through that information, and then pay particular close attention to the questions at the end of the chapter. And so these questions at the end of the chapter, you will probably see on the midterm. And then the chapter three is on 3D printing and workflow. And this is really where it starts to come together and make sense in my opinion, because what we're doing is we're designing using AutoCAD or SolidWorks. And then we're exporting it as an STL file into our Dremel slicing software. It creates a G-code and then we run it on a 3D printer. And so we're using these Bosch Dremel 3D printers. And so this again, just goes through and puts the theory behind the techniques that we're going through and using. And so we've been incorporating those in our hands-on projects as we go through this project. But with the pandemic the way it is, the best we can do is to make videos and to point you in the right direction for those things. And so as you look at these chapters, make sure you pay particular attention to the end of the chapter. Let me get there eventually. Resin printers. And then, you know, just, just be able to um, summarize the information as far as these different techniques for 3D printing. Back to our main splash page, back to our main here. So the practice exam is available under quizzes and exams. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay in here as I am because um, we did have one person who took the practice exam and we can kind of use that as an example. And so if we, if we look at the midterm practice exam, let's go back to our quick eval see if I can get that to go. And so the questions are very similar to the questions that you will see. And we want to use the D2L system to its best extent where you can insert pictures into the exam questions you're allowed to use the book, you're allowed to, to use the internet. We want you to demonstrate your ability to, um, your, your knowledge within the area. And so, you know, what is stereolithography printing? How does it work? Give a brief answer with some links. And so here's a great example of a SLA printer. It hardens this resin with a laser cutter, with a laser. And then some examples of CAD formats that we'll use and what programs will create those. Examples of 3D printers. So you can take the practice exam, Al and I will go through and grade that for you. And then we'll give you uh, that information in the feedback. And it really helps keep everybody um, on task. You know, so as we, as we get into the course, we're at the midpoint of the course, take the practice midterm. It's not required. You don't have to, but it's recommended. And so that will be active on April 7th. And when you take it, you'll need to use the honor lock system, which means you'll have to have a webcam. Essentially, you need a webcam and a photo ID 
And so once you have the account, you can show your ID to the person on the other end of the proctoring. They'll verify your identity and then they, they basically monitor you while you take the test to make sure that you're, you're the one who's taking the test. Okay, with that, uh, last week we released the Lab 7 project of the small box. Uh, this is a nice project and we're still waiting for everybody to kind of get caught up with this project. Most people have the first five projects done. And so this project, I'm not sure if it's due yet, but I'll check in the outline of topics, but it's really just a really nice project. And we're starting to get more into branding and labeling uh, a lot of our projects. And so as we go through and we look at these projects, We're taking them from our, our projects book and the projects, you can vary your designs. You can go and you can create them, you know, with this twist and a loft. It depends on your CAD skills, but we made one that's fairly simple. It's a hundred millimeters by a hundred millimeters. You can twist it to 25 degrees if you want. And it's 80 millimeters tall. And we have a, a CAD project located right here in a tutor file so that the students can go through and create those programs themselves. And so if I open it, there is a video on how to work this project, but you can kind of see we're starting to brand them. And so we have this oak leaf and then what we, what we have is the ability to imprint or create these different logos on that. And what I'm finding is that the 3D Builder is an excellent tool for, for, for branding things now, is that you can use 3D Builder to imprint on your projects. And so if I were to export this, and I'm just gonna export it to my downloads, and I'll just do the bottom of the box here. 3D Builder is the Microsoft uh, product and it's excellent. You know, they can, Microsoft seems to be able to anticipate where these markets are going. And from what I can see, they're expecting everybody to be 3D printing. And so here's one of the projects that one of the guys did. It's a, it's a, it's the vase project and you're able to imprint on it. And so I imprinted that because I get a lot of projects and some of them look a little too similar. But if I go and I open up the STL project, from my downloads. There it is. So there's my, my box in the 3D Builder. And then I can, I can manipulate it by pushing the wheel on the mouse to rotate it. I can bring this in. And if you have a newer PC, you should have 3D Builder. If not, you can Google it and it's available for a download. And then if we wanted to imprint it, we can go to this emboss and so you click on it and then you say emboss and then I can go and I can emboss it with my name on it. And then you can choose the font and the type of it, green check mark. And so that part's embossed now. And then I can just save it again. And I'm gonna leave it as an STL. So I'll go back to STL. It'll warn me telling me it might not come out exactly the same. And that's the warning. And then when I go into my Dremel software, I'll take this one out. And then I'll turn off the spiralized outer contour because if I bring in the part, it will just do a hollow box and we'll come here to our downloads. There it is. I can bring in this one. And so there's my box. I can prepare it. And you can see I've got support material. I don't think I really need the support material. It'll probably print a little faster. And here we've kind of branded it. I've got my name on it. So then if I print out a lot of people's boxes then you can imprint your name on it. And that's just a quick, easy way outside of using CAD to go through and brand that. If I wanted to take off the the um, support material on it. I can get rid of those blue lines and I can see how long it'll take. 
This is a fairly large box. This is a nine hour print. We usually scale them down a little bit, but um, we have a brim on it. That's this helps the build plate adhesion. And then if I can find where the support material is. Uh, I believe it's up on top there. Yeah. And I just keep getting these pop-ups lately. And then you just prepare it again. And there it is without the support. And things like this, it will do. You have something called bridging. And if you read through the textbook, bridging is the amount that you can print in the air before it starts to bow and, and distort. And so you can have enough of the part that does hang out in the space and bridge, but you kind of have to experiment around with that. And so that's, a, that's just a quick example of the box project. Um, you guys are doing a great job with it. Feel free to customize them and brand them and uh, keep turning those in. Back to the main splash page. The other projects have been released. And so I do have a couple of people that are just cranking right through them. And you can do all the projects in the text if you want, we'll print them all. And I have been bringing them over to the Skokie campus. So students can pick up their projects in room P130, which is the CNC lab. And I've got them out there for you. Let me know if you're coming, when you're coming, and I'll make sure that uh, your parts are ready for pickup because you will need to sign in and um, sign a waiver uh, regarding the COVID. Um, the COVID, I, I don't know what would be called it. I guess we call it the, um, in order to come into the campus, you have to check off uh, that you're not experienced symptoms of COVID. Okay, with that, um, I think we're pretty well on task. So midterm practice exam is available. Work on the lab number seven, the small box. If you have finished it, lab number eight is available. It's, it's pretty cool. It's a tape holder, tape dispenser. Um, these are always disappearing and I kind of like this textbook because the, the author seems to have like a, a desk uh, organizational theme going. And so we've got our pencil holder, we've got our memo pad holder, we've got our tape dispenser, and you can have all of these um, 3D printed and customized. All right, with that, Al, I'm going to see if there's anything I may have left out. I did a fantastic job, Joe. Sounds good. So with that, I'm going to stop the recording and we'll open things up for questions.